Our final speaker for today is Councillor Colleen Fletcher, who's the Deputy Cabinet Member for Policing and Equalities. And she's a specific interest in it for dis domestic violence, sexual abuse and exploitation. She's been a councillor for 14 years and has represented Wicking and Upper Stoke wards. In that time, has led on nursery expansion, action against crime and domestic violence. And her working life has included working in domiciliary care and housing. And I'm very grateful for her for agreeing to close this conference. Thank you, Jane. You know, when you get to speak last, you're in grave danger of saying what other people have already said. Um, but I hope in this case, repetition will make the argument much stronger. I want to thank um, the many speakers today, Councillor Alison Gingell, for getting this onto the political agenda. Seema Malhotra, Member of Parliament, working nationally and informing us of the strides she's making in government and is committed to ending FGM within a generation. Fidel Takrori, exposing myths and talking about FGM as being a means of control, which is a word that has continually cropped up in most of the work I have done concerning violence against women. The work of Celestine Celeste, promoting the understanding and awareness of FGM. The Dad's View, highlighting the need to not be judgmental as more awareness for men is vital. Who of us could fail to be moved by the presentation from Huda Ali, who through her own experience has dedicated herself to stopping this cruel practice? As someone, myself, who was raised in a loving, caring and secure family, it takes some real understanding to realise that also, so was she. And I get it. I get that. It has made me aware of how complex and delicate the engagement has to be. Today's conference has primarily focused on FGM and has been a great example of how Coventry is ready and willing to come together to protect the vulnerable. However, FGM sits within the wider agenda of violence against women and girls. According to the UN, violence against women is violence that is directed at a woman because she is a woman or that affects women disproportionately. Each year, across the UK, up to three million women experience violence and there are many more living with the legacies of abuse experienced in the past. Violence against women includes domestic violence, rape and sexual violence, sexual harassment, female genital mutilation, forced marriage, crimes in the name of honour, trafficking and sexual exploitation. Violence robs women and girls of their human rights and leaves devastating physical and emotional legacies. Violence also affects women's and girls' ability to learn and to flourish and to be active members of their families and of their communities and to contribute to their country's growth and development. Hundreds of local women and girls have experienced violence causing physical damages raising, ranging from death in extreme cases to miscarriages, broken limbs and cuts and bruises. Women also suffer scarring and physical disability and sexual offences bring the risk of HIV, sexually transmitted diseases and forced pregnancies. Violence against women and girls has huge consequences for victims, survivors and society. The direct cost to the economy of domestic violence alone in England and Wales in one year is £6 billion. In addition, the human and emotional cost is estimated at £17 billion. 
Home office modelling suggests that the lifetime costs, that is, physical, mental health care costs, as well as social service, housing, legal and employment, of dealing with the ongoing consequences of rape and serious sexual assault are £47 million in Coventry. Coventry is ensuring that we proactively tackle this issue. Over 20 years ago, and newly elected to the City Council, I was involved in the first domestic violence partnerships that were set up to try to change the hopeless and miserable lives that some women and children were living in this city. The leadership of this council has now appointed me to, as lead member to tackle domestic violence and sexual abuse and exploitation and violence against women. And together with the leader, Anne Lucas, who leads this work for the LGA, we are committed to trying to end violence against women and girls here in Coventry. This is something that as leaders we have put on our agenda. This is something that, as women, we take seriously and are passionate about. This is something that, as politicians, we can influence. This is something that, as leading women, politicians, we will take as far as we can both, locally and nationally, for its furtherance. We pledge to continue to raise awareness of FGM, strive to protect women and girls affected by and at risk of FGM, continue to work in partnership with professionals from health, social care, education, the police, Coventry University and the voluntary sector to effectively engage with communities to end FGM in Coventry. Continue to support the police to enforce the law against FGM. Support community groups to oppose FGM. Together, we can integrate FGM into prevention messages, provide better education to support girls to resist FGM, encourage boys to oppose this, and to empower communities to confront it. I hope everyone has found today to be useful, informative, moving and engaging and that everybody leaves here feeling empowered to work alongside Coventry City Council and other key stakeholders to end FGM in Coventry. I would like to thank all of the individuals who presented this morning colleagues who led the seminar sessions, the Welcome Centre, Jane Moore for chairing, and yourselves for attending. 340 people registered, registered today for this very important day, representing over 65 organisations and was oversubscribed by many. That is serious concern and determination, and I want to thank you very, very much and have a very safe journey home. Thank you.